I'm Susan McKinnon, Chief of Plastic Surgery at Washington University School of Medicine. It's a real privilege for me today to discuss Dr. Neil Ford Jones and his group's paper on recurrent carpal tunnel surgery. This is a real problem for all of us. They have 50 consecutive patients. That's a lot of patients. I think the largest in the literature so far. Between 2001 and 2007. They used our classification of persistent, recurrent, and new symptoms following carpal tunnel. Persistent is pretty much you haven't completely released the carpal tunnel or there's other things going on. Recurrent is pretty much the nerve has eventually stuck up to the scar and a new traction compression neuropathy has happened or the patient has proximal median nerve compression. It's the new problems, it's the new issues that are really the problem patients for us and that's usually iatrogenic and it's usually a cut a part of the nerve and it's usually associated with a lot of pain. In this study, the majority of patients were patients who had persistent symptoms. Only three hands had new symptoms. 50% of these patients got completely better after the redo surgery. 20% somewhat better, but 20% no better, and 10% went on to have third, a third operation. So what about those patients with the persistent symptoms? I think this is a real problem. In 1994, in an article in the Journal of Hand Surgery, we discussed this topic. It was a very controversial paper at that time, but I do think the findings and the comments we had then were absolutely spot on. And that is that, look for patients with carpal tunnel, look for other things going on, other nerve compressions, uh, median nerve in the forearm, thoracic outlet, postural problems, muscle imbalance, tendonitis, look for those things. Because if you can address those things preoperatively, you'll get a better result and you won't find yourself and your patient in a situation where they really have had a good result from the carpal tunnel, but they have persistent symptoms that everybody attributes to the carpal tunnel. So how do we get a handle on that issue in our clinic? Well, every single patient we see, we give them this pain evaluation, every visit, every patient, and they draw for us where their symptoms are. And then we can use that as a template to decide what's worse, um, whether there's issues that need to be managed with conservative management, physical therapy, but also to really give the patients a good idea about what they can expect with their carpal tunnel surgery. Some patients surely will just draw thumb index and long finger, but the vast majority of the patients that we see, they're drawing other issues going up the extremity. The second point I'd like to make is about the incision. My incision is way ulnar to the thenar crease, and it's as long as it needs to be to get a safe and complete exposure of the entire flexor retinaculum, especially that distal end, and also the antibrachial fascia proximally. On my redo surgeries, I use the same incision. I make the incision a little longer, and typically I find that median nerve just stuck to where the previous incision's been made. When I do my neurolysis, my neurolysis is done until I see bands of Fontana. So what do I mean by that? The bands of Fontana are the uh, image that we see, that optical image we see, it's like an accordion, light dark, light dark lines, and it correlates to the uh, redundancy in the single nerve fibers. So I know I've done a complete neurolysis when I see those bands of Fontana, and that's when I stop. My neurolysis is longitudinal as well as transverse. So I open it up longitudinally and then transverse, usually in a few areas, so it, the nerve really opens up and really breathes. Early post-operative management is also um, a good idea. Finally, I'd like to talk about the hand therapy, hand therapy component of this. I like all of my patients to have a pre-operative, not just post-operative management, but pre-operative visit with the hand therapist. The hand therapist then can look after other issues going on, get them started on some conservative management, for example, scapular dyskinesis, and also really help to educate them as to what to expect from the surgery. I think this really helps the patient go from surgical patient back into their regular activities in a very smooth fashion. So in summary, carpal tunnel is easy, uh, we get great results, but in those patients that don't do well, they're a problem. And this study lets us see that a full 30% aren't going to respond with the recurrent secondary carpal tunnel surgery.